Your responsibilities as a guardian of a minor. Hi, I'm Darren Finling of the Probate Pro, and we're going to examine a particular form created by the Macomb County Probate Court. It is Form MCPC for Macomb County Probate Court, Form 33M. This form highlighted at the bottom left corner is attached to petitions and people who are petitioning for a guardianship in a minor estate, and it gives a basic understanding of your responsibilities as guardian. This is not all encompassing. There are many other duties and responsibilities as set forth by Michigan statute and court rule, but it gives you a basic understanding and the court wants you to understand these basic responsibilities to ensure that you appropriately manage and administer the guardianship. We strongly urge you to work with a skilled, competent probate lawyer whenever going to probate court and addressing these types of issues. The information is not always intuitive. The laws are not always really understandable by people who are non-lawyers. So working with a skilled lawyer can give you the best opportunity to be in a good position to assure yourself of fulfilling your responsibilities as guardian of a minor. Let's work our way through this particular form. As you can see from the top left corner, highlighted in yellow, it already is filled in Macomb because it is a Macomb County Probate Court form. The file number or case number is identified. The top is pretty intuitive. It shows in the matter of, so this is the minor upon which the guardianship is occurring. And it says in bold responsibility. And it says upon, until a petition to terminate or modify, mean terminate means to end it, modify means to change it, is granted, the guardian remains responsible for the child. Now, the reason this is highlighted here is that often people think that because the child has moved out, um, for some reason that they all they are alleviated, alleviated of the responsibility. And in fact, that's not the case. You'd have to file a petition to modify or terminate the guardianship depending on the circumstances. So again, until that order is entered, you're still responsible as the guardian of the minor. And it talks about the next section about change of addresses, change of phone numbers. It's your obligation to continually keep the court apprised of where you live as guardian, your current address and phone number, as well as the minor. And if you fail to do so within 14 days, you could be suspended and that's not a good thing. So all of these responsibilities relating to serving as a guardian are really important responsibilities that you should take very seriously. You could be sanctioned by the court, you could be removed, suspended, all sorts of things can occur. So we really want you to take these responsibilities very seriously. The next section says that the Department of Health and Human Services and or court guardianship investigator may come out and meet with the ward and guardian after year one. This is part of the court's process of having uh, to be assured that the court is constantly monitoring the affairs relating to guardianship. Now, it further provides that the law requires that every minor guardianship case be reviewed after year one and each year until the minor reaches the age of six. Failure to cooperate could lead to your suspension. What that means is that when that person comes out to do this visit, they have to appropriately, appropriately identify themselves. Make sure you're actually talking to the right person who has the legal authority, but then cooperate with them because they have to write a report to the court. And if you fail to do that, the court, they're simply gonna write a report that says you failed to cooperate, which could lead to your suspension or other uh, penalties. So it's important to make sure you, you confirm their identity and then cooperate with them in their investigation. It's part of the statutory rhythm that occurs within a minor guardianship. The next section says that you must file an annual report even if that person comes out and meets and says that everything looks good. So even though that person may come out and do their visit, you must file at least annually an annual report that gives the court information about how the minor is doing. And that annual report is a form, a SCAO form, a State Court Administrative Office form. We're happy to provide that one to you or you can get it through the probate court. And you have to file it within 30 days before or after the anniversary date on when you were appointed as the guardian. Again, failing to do so, and this time they write will, not may, but will lead to your suspension. So again, it gives you the address to give to the court to be assured that you keep the court uh, up to date with the annual report. Now, of course, 
Tragically, if somebody dies, you have to let the court know. The court won't just get notice on their own. So you have to provide a death certificate or obituary so that the minor guardianship could be closed out. The court does not just get notice when people die. And again, the next section talks about just general guidelines for when you're serving as guardian or conservator. When you get your letters of guardianship, Make sure that you give a change of address for the minor if, if the minor is moved so that all the mail relating to the minor is going to be received by the guardian and create a, fo a folder. We always recommend that you journal everything. You write down everything that you do, keep accurate, really detailed records of everything you do and any bills that are paid. And they, the court says to keep a file, whether that's in writing or a physical file or digital, we want you to keep all the information because it's very hard to go back in time and to recall what took place. So if you've got it on an ongoing basis, if you're ever needed to explain anything or to report to the court or to refer back, it will all be in that nice file that you've maintained on an ongoing basis. So you have to even keep better records than you would naturally for yourself. And it talks about keeping all the court documents, the petitions, the inventories, fiduciary accounts, and so on. Keep everything so you can refer back to those. Financial and record keeping really relates to whether if you're doing any financial, um, handling any finances on behalf of the minor through Social Security or otherwise, keep accurate records. Do not mix your money up, segregate the money. Uh, we don't want that to be commingled or mixed up and make certain that you've managed the money under the laws relating to what it requires a fiduciary to do. It's a very enhanced responsibility. Keep every receipt, every record, keep impeccable, clean records so that if anything is challenged, that you can go back to the record and show that your record keeping was accurate and that the expense was appropriate. So again, the, the important thing here is don't just use the money like an ATM machine where you're just doling out cash. Everything corresponds to be assured that you could show the court that you're using the money for the minor, for the appropriate pur uh, purpose. Now, anytime, uh, the last sentence talks about keeping a record when visiting. This usually relates to adults because in most minor guardianships, the person's living there. Again, all that kind of journaling about every event, every visit, I strongly urge you to keep impeccable, clean, detailed records of everything that you do so that when you're uh, showing the court what you've done, you've got all that information. Whether you're going to a doctor visit or social interaction, just keep a journal. It'll be really helpful in the event that you have to show something that you've done. At the Probate Pro, we are passionate about everything probate. And in this particular case, if you've got questions about how to navigate through the system, visit us, contact us. We're happy to try to put you in the right hands. You're welcome to call our office if you've got more questions about gut minor guardianships or any probate or trust related matter. You can visit us at theprobatepro.com or call us at 1-833-PROBATE.